Ospreys. Welcome to episode 17 of the Healthy Osprey podcast. My name is Sairi. And I'm Kathy. Hello, everyone. And today we'll be talking about a variety of things such as alcohol and drugs and how to stay safe um, at parties and just how to stay safe um, while still trying to enjoy yourself um, while on campus or outside of campus. Yeah. Um, yeah, we definitely want to address like the resources that you guys have available, um, even yeah. when it comes to a situation like that, whether that's you um, or a friend or someone that's not even your friend and they're just a roommate to you, an acquaintance. Um, yeah. So that is something that I'll give to Sayuri so he can talk about that. And then I'll talk about um, other uh, mm -hmm things that you should be on the lookout for yeah so first things first um students may not know but um if you are ever in a situation where um say someone you know is unconscious or is overdosing on on drugs or is super highly intoxic intoxicated where they look like they really need um, medical help um, the campus has this thing known as the medical amnesty policy where students are, if you do, um, well, if you call for help, it's basically encourage students to call for help. And so, and then they're basically not, they are basically safe or from not getting prosecuted um, by, um, by the police. So it actually encourages students to was um ask for help so i think that's a very important resource that some students may not know about because some students may be in a situation where uh they don't know what they do and they feel helpless and they feel scared they don't know that and that is just putting the individuals who are in trouble um in more danger so i'll just keep that in mind so if you are ever in a situation or you know someone that's in a situation please let them know that the, med the university does have the medical amnesty policy and that they are um, I guess they, it provides an exemption from prosecution and it won't just, you basically won't get into too much trouble from um, the situation that you're in, whether it's drugs or alcohol, or whether you're underage or not, or not. Yeah, so like an example of like when this could happen um, and is if, you know, you live at the fountains, for example, and mm -hmm. you, are with your four other roommates and you are just staying in, you kind of have like a big like study night or whatever. You just have been in the dorm all night and then at like later in the night, um, one of the roommates, they may be your friend or they may not be your friend, um, they just look unrecognizable. <laughs> so basically mm -hmm. like their eyes are drooping, they can't hold a balance um, to themselves. Um, those are examples of someone, they can't even speak like actual like words um, or they're throwing up or like whatever it is like, um, or they're like pushing you away. Those are um, some of the signs that you should look out for when it comes to someone that is very intoxicated um, with alcohol. Um, I've seen that and I definitely feel like it is a lot different than seeing someone that's just drunk. So yeah. like seeing someone that's drunk, they just, everyone's like has their different ways. Some people are, you know, aggressive. Some people are rude, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, some people just start laughing at everything what the thing that i'm saying is like what i said before um that's when you actually should take advantage of that resource that sairi said because obviously mm -hmm. like even if you come in contact with the cop um they're obviously going to look at you and they're like okay well you obviously have nothing wrong with you so why would they obviously assume that you know you are involved in this at all when yeah. you're in pajamas and they're like in heels. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, and yeah, so don't ever like hesitate to help that person out because if that person, you know, if you just ignore that um, and you saw it and they end up 
like sleeping in their dorm um, and then something really bad happens to them, like such as, you know, what if they don't wake up the next day? Now, I'm not saying that could happen, but it really could. Like, you don't know someone's limit if you don't know that person personally and obviously they look like they're intoxicated so um yeah and then you could go and be in trouble and um you don't know because like you were kind of a witness and you saw so why didn't you so definitely reach out to that um another thing that i want to talk about is i don't know if i re-relates to this but Something that you should look out for if you go to college parties. Mm -hmm. Um, So basically, like, what you guys should look out for if you're going to be a freshman or a sophomore and you like to go to these fraternity parties, um, stories that I've been told and, like, heard and all this is that, like, there's something called, like, you know, the juice. <laughs> so mm. juice is basically a juice where it is in the NFL when there's those giant Gatorade uh, tubs of mm. Gatorade. That's what you're gonna see at a frat party. Now mm. in that is a bunch of alcohol that is mixed and they add like some like fruit juice to it to make it like sweet and whatever and so you think it's like you think you're good with it you know Mm -hmm. but secretly um now i'm not saying this is all the fraternities but yeah and this could be any party too it doesn't have to be any any party it's kind of it's a normal college party this could be any party that has an an open drink okay so you should never (laughs) drink a drink that is already open okay unless you're going to a restaurant and they're making it for you themselves Mm -hmm. um so basically um in that thing they have a lot of little secret ingredients where some people whether that's a fraternity, whether that's a random stranger, they'll just sneak in and add the little um, drugs in there that are the drugs that eventually wipe you out and you don't know where you are and all of this. And um, yeah, so don't make that mistake of doing that. Tell your friends not to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Even if they think it tastes like apple juice like just don't do it like drink apple juice before <laughs> um, <laughs> the... no yeah but i'm serious though because it's not good another thing is that yeah. and i feel like this is for both people it's it, it's usually directed for like obviously the girls because the girls like the fruity drinks and everything and whatever um mm-hmm. but when you are in public um men and women not just women but they need to be aware of their drinks so like at a bar um you should never have a drink that is not looking at you so if Mm -hmm. your drink is looking at you that you bought it and you are in possession of it it should stay in possession of you you should never walk away from it you should never just um tell the stranger next to you hey can you watch my drink i'm gonna go to the bathroom no finish the drink, go to the bathroom, and then come Mm -hmm. back and do whatever you want. Um, I've seen just people that just really don't care, and that Mm -hmm. is where there's the secret um, people that, and that can be a man and a woman, they're literally targeted in both ways, and they can literally just add something right in there, and you won't even Mm -hmm. notice it at all. Um, I think the uh, important thing is to like, uh, like Kathy said, um, basically just be aware of your surroundings where you're in uh, situations like this, uh, situations where you're at, you're at a college party or you're at the bar or wherever you may be, um, especially when there's uh, alcohol or drugs involved. Yeah. Uh, you never truly understand someone's intentions. Yeah. Um, so the, I guess the best possible thing to do is to set yourself up in a way where, where I guess you, you make it harder for people to take advantage of you, um, by doing things such as being with friends, 
Um, like Kathy said, keeping a drink in front of you, um, avoiding drinks that you really don't know where it came from. Um, you know, a lot of these things can be seen as uh, people like are just being party poopers or they're being too strict or they're just not trying to have fun. But a lot of these things, are, I mean, they're they're really important um, just because of, we've, we've heard the stories. We, we've seen it happen to people that we know. Um, and it can be it can be very dangerous. So um, not to like scare people or anything, but it's just like a, it's it just like something that you want to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. It, it happens. And another thing is if you're going to go to a frat party and you're with all your friends, um, you either choose to be the designated driver and not drink at all, or you all just go in an Uber, you split the money because exactly. that money is definitely, you might think, oh my God, it's like $10, like that's yeah. so much, blah, blah. Like that's your life. I'm like, well, do you want to go to jail and pay for bail um and that's gonna be a lot of money and do you want to pay court fees and everything for a dui um so don't it isn't worth it It, it, like the risk the risk isn't worth it um uber lyft like (laughs) it's really it could be like something my friend um, exactly sleeping it doesn't matter like exactly so I've had a, I get researches. I'm here in Tampa and I still get calls from my best friends that are over there in Jacks and I'm like mm. I'm not here <laughs> so I don't know what you want me to do but I help them out though um and that's just funny because but it also really good though because they still come to me even though I'm not physically there um but what I'm saying is that, yeah it's definitely not worth the risk to get into um, a DUI. Even if your house is a mile away, even mm-hmm. you might run into a mailbox, okay? And that's gonna cost you $40 or 50 yeah. instead mm-hmm. of the $10 or $5, even though it's a mile away. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, just just get the Uber. like. Exactly. Yeah. Then when you're out at these places, um, one thing to know is definitely your limit. Um, when it comes to alcohol, because uh, some people may not know the limit, but if, if if you drink alcohol enough or you you've done it a few times, you sort of kind of get a sense of it, or you get to that point where you, in your mind you're just like, okay, whoa, like I'm I'm stumbling in a little bit, slurring my words a little more. Then you may kind of get the idea that you're at your limit. When you're at your limit probably your best bet not to go to um to the extreme with it just because then it could get really dangerous and you can basically go into um to the point where you can get alcohol poisoning and alcohol poisoning is not fun so yeah definitely know your limit and if you do find someone that is undergoing alcohol poisoning and they're throwing up the best thing they do is to lay them on their side and put their arm on i think like under the head and um and just leave and leave them there um and don't let them go to sleep so yeah no that's very dangerous. no um yeah because the more that you drink the more that you actually desire it so that is actually mm-hmm. why people are like why how does someone drink so much and like not know their limit it's like they mm-hmm. actually lose like those taste buds and it actually is like water to them so yeah. they're actually like they're like actually like sensory type i don't know how to say that yeah because but that because, because that first drink is probably gross like just because the like, alcohol doesn't taste good and well in my opinion at least after, yeah but like and after, but the, after that yeah, yeah you kind of like get into water it to them and that's why they yeah. can't stop and yeah that's where people start to black out and everything like that so yeah guys um it is something that y'all should be aware of um whether you drink or not you're going to be around someone one day that will be drunk in your life Mm -hmm. um and so we just wanted to address that these things are super important to know and even if you don't drink and you see a friend and they drove there um you know offer them an uber like like you know 
make go on their phone and you know get the app for them and make them uh, make sure they get home safe um if you're a bartender you can uh you know actually ask them if they're good and you can refuse to not let them get in their car or you have you can actually tell them like no you have to get an uber and if they're really like bad because like i've definitely seen that before where they just assume they're okay but they're not because it's mm -hmm. super dangerous so exactly. you're putting other people's lives at risk when you're driving under the influence yeah that's that's very true it can get very uh dangerous in times like that so we feel like uh having a designated driver is so important or just having an uber is, is so important um and then like even added on to that like even the drug aspect of being on on campus or being off campus um there's so many things that can affect the psyche that you don't know really what it is and it's really about educating yourself on whether it's whether you should or should not participate in um things of that manner and you know we have like in campus we may have like some um and a lot of college campuses uh on the cases of adderall and how students abuse it um adderall can it's a really dangerous drug that students um, may partake in because they feel like it's at this point it's sort of like a it's a po super popular drug and people just see it as oh i need to take it so i can get ahead of people it's so a methamphetamine it's literally yeah exactly like a methamphetamine and i feel, yeah, like, I feel like people are just like oh it's just that and like um well okay <laughs> yeah ex exactly and it, it can have a really hard crash on your body it's 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 really not worth it. Um, if you do ever have problems with um drugs or alcohol on or off campus, remember guys, we have the counseling center on campus. We have other resources that can assist you. Um, um, if you do have any trouble with um things of that manner. Yeah. All right, guys. So we appreciate um you guys listening to this. Sire, is this your last podcast with me? Uh, sad to say. Wait, what's today? I think the next one might be the last one. Okay. But yeah, stay tuned. Um, <laughs> stay tuned. Really, I'm very sad. <laughs> really don't want to leave. Well, I don't know. I'll miss these podcasts, but maybe my next one will be my last one. Uh, yeah. If it is this one, uh, I love you guys. I was, I was about to say a curse word, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love you guys and uh stay safe, stay healthy. Um yeah. Fairy yeah, has been really helpful in all these events that we have hosted in the past before. Um, you know the vibes. And so he's been definitely very helpful towards me and um the team and everything. So we definitely appreciate him a lot. Um but anyways, we're going to sign out, guys. Um, stay tuned for the next podcast. We hope that you guys enjoyed listening to this. Uh, mm -hmm. Please uh, like it if you comment on it. Um, or also listen on the other platforms that we have. Listen on the previous podcast, whatever you want to do. But yeah, guys, have a good weekend and stay safe. Bye, guys. Bye.